Module 10. Hi, Joe Cerrone here, and today we're going to go through Module 10 for our AutoCAD online course. Coming from our main page, we'll select the Module 10 link. And Module 10 deals with block references and attributes using AutoCAD. And what a block reference is, is it's, a, it's, a, it's basically a symbol, a CAD symbol that's inserted uh, numerous times within a drawing. So when we have something like this uh, pipe assembly, we can go through and insert the different valves and components from a standard symbols library. And our job today will be to create an electrical schematic drawing using electrical schematic symbols. There has been a change. Uh, the book has added an additional chapter. So we are on module 10, but the chapter in Harnessing AutoCAD is now chapter 11. And so I put this note here on the web page that chapter 10 covers drawing constraints, and we'll update this at a later time. We'll have to add that into the online course. But for right now, we're going to cover chapter 11 in module 10. And so I've included that PowerPoint. I've also included the PowerPoint for the uh, Drawing Constraints chapter if you are interested. So let's take a look at this. Over here on the right is our exercise and we're going to do exercise 10-5B and 10-5A. And They're kind of out of order because you really need to do 10-5B first, creating these symbols before you can do A, the electrical schematic. I've created a couple of links for you. Uh, this link right here is xxmodule10.dwg and what that will do is to give us the drawing title block for that drawing and chapter10.pdf and so if we click on the chapter10.pdf it will open this information and it goes through some additional assignments on creating blocks and attributes. And what I suggest you do is you download this to your desktop and then open it separately. This is a hydraulics schematic. And the instructions for creating that. So I've already downloaded mine to my desktop. Rather than continue to leaf through this, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to select the Chapter 10 module drawing by clicking on that and selecting Open. And here is our title block. And I'm going to make this a little bit smaller here and I'm going to open up the chapter 10 PDF and so here we have this electrical symbols and I've already set your grid and your snap for you so that we can uh, create this drawing if we look at the ribbon here on the home tab um, I have the user interface set up as we usually do with the toolbar enabled and the menu bar also enabled and down here at the bottom I have our O snaps set not to use icons. So use icons is disabled so we get the words. If we take a look at our settings, I'm on the home tab and I have snap and grid active and I have O track dynamic and line weight. What does that mean? Well, snap and grid will control our cursor movement. If I turn off the grid, we don't see it and turn it back on. And snap will control the cursor increment movement, meaning it'll snap in between these, these squares. O-Track is kind of useful. We don't necessarily need it for this drawing, but what it'll allow us to do is to be able to hover over certain areas and then it will create tracking points. Uh, these are kind of a newer technology that you'll see in some of your parametric modeling softwares. Dynamic input means that the words will follow the cursor. So if I have to input something like the word line, you'll see it right here on the, on the screen rather than down in the command prompt. And then line weight will allow us to see the thickness of the lines that's been defined. 
So let's get started. We'll take a look at our PDF. And we're going to start off by drawing this earth ground symbol. And we're going to put an insertion point on it. And then we're going to put some text underneath that. Once we've created these symbols, what we'll do is we will then create a block drawing. So let's get started here. We'll come over to the line command and I'm going to just kind of zoom in. Start with the line command and I think I'll start right here. And that's going to be two units long. I'll hit escape, get my line command back. And so essentially this is um, pretty straightforward drawing. There is not a lot of complexity. Um, we're just drawing symbols for an electrical schematic. I'm going to insert a point. And then I'm going to insert my text using the single line text. And I'm going to use a justification option on that. So I'm going to say justify. And I'm going to say center and I'm going to click my mouse right here rotation angle 0 earth ground and I'm going to bump that down just a little bit it's a little close for me so I'll move it one grid snap down and I also am going to put that on a separate layer so I'm going to select the text come up to my layers properties. I'm going to put that on the text layer. So that is our first symbol. Uh, we have not created a block out of it yet. I'm going to go through and create the first line of the symbols and then I may insert some of the other ones from a standard drawing. So we'll say line and we'll come over here. Start point, end point. And you don't have to continue to go up to the line command every time you need to draw a line. I like to hit the space bar and then hit the space bar again. And what that will do is that will work the same as the enter key. And so rather than going back up, I'll hit the space bar to terminate the command and then space bar to repeat it. Now that we've drawn this chassis ground, we'll come over to our text. And this time I'm going to put it on the text layer first insert my text, select my justification option, so I'm going to say down arrow, justify, center, I'll select my center point, rotation angle zero, and this is going to be C-H-A-S-S-I-S, G-R-O-U-N-D, enter, enter. So that's my second symbol, and I'm going to then do this resistor, Resistors um, basically are used to control the amount of electricity that flows through a circuit and they'll have different color codes on those to be able to read what kind of uh, current it's going to allow to flow through there or how much current it's going to allow to flow through there. We'll do another You'll notice that when I drew that on the text layer, it didn't have any line weight. So I'm going to switch back over to my zero layer and start with my line command. And I'll put a point symbol on that as well. And rather than uh, type the text on this, you can take some, some liberties. It looks like this line's a little bit long. And so let me bring this back. I'll put a grip on that. 
click on the grip, pull that back. Looks like it's about to there. And what I'll do is copy the text and then edit it. And so that's a way you can save some time, but you have to be careful not to forget to rename these text. And we'll erase this word here. Okay, next row we have a battery. And I'm going to increase the magnification here. So we're going to go and start over here with two units. Right mouse click, repeat line command, escape, right mouse click, repeat line command, escape, right mouse click, repeat line command, escape. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the symbols in and then we'll add the words. And so that's our battery. We'll do our coil with a three-point arc, and so we'll come in here, and we've got these three, four arcs, and so we'll say our first one, let's keep them lined up here, right mouse click, repeat arc, and the arc command is not modal, so I don't have to hit the escape key to discontinue it. I actually just have to hit the right mouse key because it discontinues after each small arc. And so this CAD program will, will do those things. Some of the commands are modal, others are not. We'll put a point here, and I think we need one here too, our insertion points. And then we'll create this core transformer. Now on this core transformer, we can actually borrow this geometry by using a copy and a mirror. And so we're going to create this core transformer by drawing a couple of lines first. And then I'm going to copy by selecting this. Now if I don't want that point, I can hold shift and click on that point. And it will remove it from the selection set. I'll hit enter to end the selection. And then I'll copy it from this point to this point. And then I will mirror this geometry and I'll establish a mirror line. You don't need the physical mirror line, you just need two points. And I will then insert my insertion point for this. So that's our core transformer. Let's take a look at our next symbols. We have a capacitor and an, an NPN transistor as well as a PNP transistor. So starting with the capacitor, another thing that we can do rather than to redraw the geometry is to copy the battery symbol down and just to erase this line here and draw in this arc. And so that's what we'll do. We'll copy we will copy this geometry base point of where I'm copying it from and my destination point where I'm copying it to. And then we will come in here and we will draw in our arc. My grid's a little bit off on this. It's not that it's off, but it's just that it's not exactly on the endpoints. And so I'm going to move this geometry 
slightly down and that's what's nice about using a grid and a snap is that it's like working with graph paper and so I can keep everything on the graph paper I'll draw this NPN transistor I'll start off by drawing a circle and that radius of that circle is two squares and then I'll draw the geometry for that And there's a little arrow on this, and so to create this arrowhead, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line, and we're going to select a point to draw that line. To do this, I'm going to turn off the snap, and I'm going to draw just a spot right here. Arrows should be about three times longer than they are wide. And what I'll do is I'll hold Shift in the right mouse button, Shift RMB, and I'll select nearest. And so I'll select a point nearest to that and then I'll draw another line and I'm going to turn my O snap on and I'm going to go from here to a perpendicular. It's good to be neat when we do these drawings and then I'll mirror this geometry about these two endpoints. And once I have done that I will go to the hatch mode and set it for solid and I will then hatch this and this component. Alright, and so then we have a PNP transistor, and again, it's very similar, and so we can copy it over and just reverse the arrow direction. And so we'll say copy, we'll select the geometry, we'll select, we'll turn the snap back on, we'll copy it from here to here. And then the bottom row of symbols we'll create. And in the bottom row we'll create this variable capacitor, this switch, and this connection. So we'll start with this capacitor and again we'll grab the geometry from the capacitor and we'll bring it down to the next row and then we'll rotate it 180 degrees. And so we'll say copy. We'll select this object. We'll hit enter to end the selection. We'll copy it from this point down to this point here. Then we'll rotate it, select the object again, hit enter to end the selection. I'm going to turn off this O snap. That'll keep it from grabbing geometry I don't want. I'll rotate that, and then I'm going to draw the arrow here right through it. Again, the same technique for drawing the arrow. Uh, since the arrow is on the end, I'm going to let it snap to that part. It looks like I can snap to that too, but I will have to turn it off once I get to this point. And I'll use perpendicular to make sure that arrow is nice and neat. And then I'll mirror that. And I'll turn on my O snap to mirror it from this end point to this end point. And I will then fill and this. Two more symbols. We'll create our switch. Turn my snap back on and I'll draw a line and then a circle and another line. And you can kind of see how the O-snap is trying to acquire points. O-snap is power, more powerful than the regular snap. And so there's certain dominance in these commands when both of them are active that we need to have. And so you will toggle the status on and off as you need them. And that's why I use shift right mouse to be able to toggle on and off those object snaps as I go through and mirror this object from this endpoint to this endpoint. 
and then we will fill the arrow and draw the other components for our switch. Turning our snap back on. And a line with a point. And lastly, our last symbol here is a connection. We will draw a circle. I don't need that point, but I'm going to leave it there. And then we'll use our fill mode. Actually, I think I will get rid of that point. Fill mode. Okay. And then the rest of this is to go ahead and put on the different text for each of these. And so if we come back here, we can then go and add our text for battery, capacitor, etc. And again, I'm just going to, we'll do single line text. I'm going to say J for justify. I'm going to select center. I'm going to select underneath this symbol right here. And then I'm going to specify rotation angle 0, B-A-T-T-E-R-Y, battery. And if you're like me and you put it on the wrong layer, it's faster to put it on a different layer and then to switch it than it is to constantly switch between the layers. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to invoke the text command again, justify center. I'll select that center point. Coil. Core transformer. Rotation angle zero. Core. And you can see on this one I didn't put the text centered. I may be able to use match properties to match it not only to the layer but also to the type but apparently not it's not going to let me uh, bring that over so I can manually just move it I'll just click on it and move that so that we have our text proper and again you want to use the proper layers and so put this on layer text I'm not going to put the text on the last view in, in the sake of keeping the video short, but you will need to put the proper text names for these things like connections and switches. And then once you have done that, what you are going to do is create a block out of each of these symbols. And so now that we have created our symbols, I'm going to save this. And so I'm going to say save as, and I'm going to save it as my initials, dash module 10. And then I'm going to create blocks out of each of these symbols. And to create a block out of a symbol, what you'll do is you'll go to the Insert tab, and you'll select Create Block. The name of it will be Earth Ground. The base point for that will be this point right here. I will then select the objects. I'm going to leave it as retain, and what you can see is a little symbol here that it has selected those five objects. And we'll say OK. And then I'll do the same. I'll say insert. I'm say, I will say create block. This one will be chassis ground. Pick point. Base point will be this point here. And then I will select the objects. And you can see a little glyph of the object. It'll say six objects selected. And I'll say OK. And what that does is it creates a block table. And so what you're going to do is you're going to create these blocks. And then we're going to go through and insert those blocks into our drawing. And so what I've done is I've created a second page here with the electrical schematic symbols. And if we click on that, you can see I've kind of got a little of this started here. And if we come over here to our PDF, we can take a look at that. And let me 
zoom this down slightly. Like I said, the, they're kind of out of order in this book, and so they have you do the symbols and they show you the schematic, but it's kind of the same thing. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert my resistor, and I'm going to then create this schematic diagram. And so I'm going to toggle over to my instructor version of this drawing, where I've created all the blocks. And as you can see, I've got these earth ground, chassis ground, resistor. And then if I go to my electrical schematic, uh, what I'm going to do here is sometimes you can see the circles aren't really round and that's caused by the computer um, the farther away you are the less segments it uses to create those round objects <clears throat> so I'm going to regenerate that and what I'm going to do here is to go through and start with this first part where I'm going to insert this resistor and so what I'll do is on the annotate page I'll say insert I'll choose my resistor. I'm also going to specify on screen the rotation. So I'll specify on screen rotation. I'll say OK. I can click at this point here for that resistor. And then I can turn that and put that first resistor in. I can then go and draw a line from that point. And I'll draw that out. I'll bring that down. I'll hit escape and then I'll insert my capacitor. You'll notice this is a block table and I can select capacitor and I can choose OK and I click that point and I can rotate it and move on to the next component. So creating electrical drawings is really pretty fundamental. Once you have created the blocks and the symbols, then it's really just a matter of inserting those blocks into the drawing. So for the rest of this assignment, students are to insert these additional components, add the text labels, and save this as exercise your initials dash module 10. That completes module 10.